has lived in Penang before 2008 and who lives in Penang now or you know even if it is an occasional visit to Penang before and now comes to see Penang it's like a different world you know we're not just talking about the physical changes like it's cleaner there are you know better things going on that is also true we have you know made all this we have cleaned it up it used to be called Penang Daro Sampa now it's one of the cleanest most it is the most livable city in Malaysia I came back to Penang after 2008 and it's not just me so many of my friends came back to Penang after two years. And these are people to work, to live. And these are people who were, you know, after university, working in UK, Singapore, just Hong Kong, outstation. Suddenly they all come back. So what has happened in Penang is that suddenly you're, you're seeing people coming back. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's starting to happen. There's a momentum. Four years ago, it was a dead town. It was a ghost town. You see, so these are the changes that are happening. So what we say is Penang has a buzz again. So that, that and that's something you feel, not really physical. But um, so it has been both physical and it's also been, you know, a sort of a spirit that has returned to Penang. The Penang state government budget is only seven hundred fifty million a year. The budget of USM, University of Science Malaysia, in Penang is one point two billion. Bigger than the state government. Almost double the state government of Penang's budget. Despite having such a small budget, and despite, you know, um, obviously, you know, we have a federal government that's different, you know, that they don't cooperate as much, you know. And despite all these problems, we can, we can do so much. We get rid of corruption, you know. We, for the first time in history, Penang become number one in investment. After two years taking over, we clean it up, we institute open tenders, you know, we created confidence. Like I said, people start coming, right? People coming back. So investors also start coming. So what we have, uh, record investments two years in a row. Our livability index went up. It's just become such a more livable place. How how come the police in the state, uh, in Penang State, is more efficient? No. Well, I mean, I mean, the police are, are, are generally efficient if everybody cooperates. I think that's the important thing. So what we did is, you know, we ins of course we do all the normal things like install C extra CCTV, and then we also started neighborhood patrolling. Pasukan Peronda Sukarelawan. So these neighborhood patrols, um, we started all this and we coordinate and cooperate a lot with the police, you know, to make sure that the police are in all the high crime spots and all that. Basically having police presence and being cooperative with them, I think that's very important. We have Speaker's Corner in Penang, okay? In Speaker's Corner, you can say anything you want. The police are there to monitor but up to today, they have never ever caught anyone. Even though people go up there and, and talk nonsense. <coughs> They, you know, say bad things about Guan Ying, they say bad things about anybody. I mean, you're free to talk. You can say bad things about Chief Minister, you can say bad things about VN, whatever. The police have not done anything. And you know what I mean? Even the police in federal are telling, hey, why you don't do anything? And they say, no. You know, in Penang, there is this freedom. People want the freedom. Yeah, that's upholding the spirit of democracy. That's upholding the spirit of democracy. And I think that's basically what we want to do. I mean, we cannot please everybody, you know? Well, I think uh, having a two-party system like what you say empowers people. Um, earlier I mentioned about uh, having a two-party system means they're more careful now and they cannot just simply pass things as they like as what they used to before but also in terms policy-wise, right? Um, you know, when we first got government in 2008, Slangor, Pinay, we started doing things to help people. Um, the problem in Malaysia is that um, income is very low. We have 60% uh, of families in Malaysia earning less than 3,000 ringgit a month. And then when you live in urban places, urban centers, even in Sabah and Sarawak, if you live in an urban area, it's very expensive. Your rent is high, your things are expensive, inflation, living cost, yeah. you know, living costs. How do you survive? Cars are so expensive. When you buy a car, your house loan and car loan itself is really more than half your salary. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So people have no money. So that's what the people are facing now today. Yeah. People are facing this, so we realized this. We started to do programs in Penang, in Slango Slango. We give free water. You know, we uh, when you go to university, they give, we give you some uh, a grant and all that. Penang, we do the same for senior citizens, for disabled, for single mothers, school children. You know, we give all these eight programs. We started. Um, we got rid of hardcore poverty. We help people. We, we so many social welfare programs, and we first started doing this. You know, the BM they say you can't do this. If, you know, how can you just simply give money to the people, you know, even even though they deserve it and even though they need help, 
you cannot simply give because then you go bankrupt. That's what they say. But we have shown every year, you know, we have managed to increase our state income at the same time, still maintain a surplus, at the same time, still run all these programs to help people. And we are saying that if we remove corruption from the system, we will save billions of ringgit. Everything is going to waste because of corruption. If we can remove just corruption, we will save billions of ringgit, which we can use to give back to the people.